Hey, Brynn, how are you doing today? Drinking a little bit of coffee to get started. <laughs> a little bit it's of hydration. Be one of those sessions. Yeah, <laughs> I guess so. Sense. So thanks for joining me today. Today we're going to talk about the awesome integration between Business Central and Microsoft Dynamics 365 CRM modules, the sales module in particular. And I know a lot of our customers come to us looking for that, which makes sense because sellers want to have that information about their customers, right? They want to know, you know, what did they buy in the past? What have they ordered? What open invoices they have? Are they on credit hold? Things like that. It just helps make the seller's job a lot faster without having to go to the accounting team. And honestly, it's like one of the biggest benefits of CRM is putting all the information someone needs in one spot so they can get to it quickly to do their job. Did I miss anything? Is there any other reasons that you could think of? No, I think those are all great reasons. Also, it's nice for customer service, so not even just sales. Um, but if you do have customer service teams that want access to that data, they can pull it up, see if there are orders pending. If there's any issues, they can see that right from CRM without having to connect with you know, warehouses or accounting. I, mean, I guess that makes a lot of sense. A lot of our customers are distribution manufacturing, so just knowing what products and what orders they have and what they might be calling to complain about is a good thing for service departments, right? Yeah, absolutely. As much as we wish customers wouldn't complain, CRM has a good purpose with tracking tickets. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> well, so today we're going to just talk about how to set up the configuration between the two. And then I think in the next session, we'll talk about how people actually use this. So today, if you're more of a technical person, it's going to be up right up your alley. If you want to know more how to use the software, we're going to do that in the next session. Does that sound right? Yeah, sounds correct to me. Awesome. Let's do this. So maybe just describe a little bit about how do the two things integrate? Because I know some prospects hear the words dynamics, and they hear Dynamics 365 Business Central, and they hear Dynamics 365 Sales, and they assume it's all just one database, but it's not one database, right? There's two separate databases, and somehow the integration will link those two. Correct, yeah. So Business Central is going to be your accounting side. So it's going to have all of your accounts receivable, accounts payable. It's got all of your invoicing data. It's got all of your basic customer financials are going to be in the Business Central side. And typically, not somewhere where a lot of salespeople like to spend their time, right, in accounting software. So at least I've heard through the grapevine. Customers probably <laughs> don't want their salespeople in the accounting software yeah. making all sorts of trouble for the accounting. It is, I think, a, a mutual benefit to keep uh, yeah. salespeople in sales systems and keep um, accounting in accounting. So at the same time, there's obviously a whole lot of data inside Business Central, inside accounting that is really useful to salespeople, like what kind of orders their customers have previously placed. So if they have any big ticket items that they purchase again and again, it's really nice for them to be able to have that information on the sales side when they're talking about, you know, setting up new opportunities for potential sales. So. If we see, this is Business Central, so this is our accounting side. Uh, I'm going to take a quick look just because, you know, they are different over here in CRM. So this is our D365 sales side, and you can see this is a lot more focused on the sales end. So we've got our accounts, our different contacts, potential sales opportunities. So this is where we want really our sales team devoting the most of their time to kind of following up on leads, interacting with customers, and getting new sales opportunities going. But at the same time, you know, we want them to be able to have access and insight into that information that's coming from Business Central. That makes sense. So there's some sort of integration piece right. that you have to do you download this separately from. So like if I bought Business Central and I bought the CRM side, the sales side, would I have to download some additional piece of software from Microsoft? So you don't have to necessarily download an additional piece of software. The integration, everything is provided for actually within Business Central. So you're going to be setting up the integration from the Business Central side. There are a couple of prerequisites that you'll have. So first up, you need to have Business Central, most important thing. Makes sense. It makes sense. And you'll have to have at least one company set up in Business Central before you can test the integration. You'll also need to have a Dynamics 365 sales environment. So today we're actually going to be using trials of both of those. So we have a D365 sales trial, we have a BC trial, and both of those come equipped with some test data. So if you don't, if you want to spin up your own to test, you have that option as well. And if a customer had Business Central today and wanted to dive into CRM, they could get a CRM trial and then uh, play around with this? 
Yeah, absolutely. If you want to share that link, there is a um, quick link to download a D365 sales trial. You can trial um, marketing, you can trial a sales module, and that'll just attach to your existing tenant. It's got usually like a 30-day window where you can test some things out so that you know you can work with your own real data, you can work with test data that's similar to your system, and that's really nice to be able to have as well. Well, we'll put that description in the show show notes, the show description. (laughs) Show notes, yeah. Yeah, the show notes. (laughs) Anyway, okay, cool. So do you want to just dive into showing how it gets set up or do you want to talk a little bit about the mechanics of it? Like how do they integrate? Is it a separate database? Because I know Dynamic CRM is in the Dataverse, but Business Central has its own database, right? It does. So the way, and we'll talk about this a little bit more when we walk through setup, but the first step in the integration is actually to set up a connection from Business Central to Dataverse. So we're going to be connecting to the same Dataverse environment that sales CRM sits on so that we're passing all of our Business Central data into that Dataverse. We're updating those tables so that we can then read that information on the sales side. That makes sense. Okay, perfect. And just one last question, just before we get too into the weeds. Sure. Is it bi-directional or is it just unidirectional? That is a great question. So dealer's choice, I guess, would be my answer. You have the option to set up either a one-way direction, ideally from our ERP, so from our business central environment into sales, because our accounting data is most likely going to be the most up-to-date, the most uh, verified, the most actionable data that we have. So you absolutely can do a one-way push of, say, all of our account records, all of our customer records, all of our invoice sales orders into CRM, and then have your sales team work with that data. However, you also can enable a bi-directional integration. So if I were having my salespeople on maybe the CRM side, working with their different accounts, creating opportunities, creating quotes, and creating orders from those quotes, and I wanted to be able to push those into our, my accounting system for accounting to process and invoice, that is absolutely possible as well. So. You don't necessarily need to choose specifically one or the other. You also can break that down by table. So if I say I want my accounts to be bi-directional, I want those to push and pull from both systems, or if I want my orders but I don't want quotes to be bi-directional, you can make that choice uh, on the table level as well, which we'll look at a little bit later. And is it accurate to assume that you can set up these syncs to happen at different times, like maybe the customer sync happens more often than the order sync? Is that, can you set those at different schedules? You can. So there is some control that you have over the schedules. By default, I believe they run about every 30 minutes. So it's not, uh, yeah, it's fast. It's not 100% real time, but it's pretty close. So just having that data update at that level is really nice to have as well. So with other integrations, you might have to wait, say, like a once a day for my context to get pushed or something like that. So it is nice because of the fact that they're both sitting on Dataverse. You have that information passing into Dataverse, getting updated very quickly and ending up, you know, whether you're pushing to Business Central or D365 sales, either of those gets updated pretty quickly. This is probably an impossible question to answer, yeah. and it might depend on the user environment and their data size and complexity. but. Does the frequency of the sync slow down performance or hurt performance in any way? I mean, I have to imagine it it does impact it somewhat, but I'm not sure. It can. It'll really depend on database size. I think you were right about that. So there is some additional weight on the system, right, when we're talking about updating those tables, especially with such regularity. But that'll really depend on, you know, how many records we have in the system, how much data we're passing back and forth, what those loads look like. And I have a really dumb question because sure. people are concerned. People can keep working in the system while the sync is going on, right? They don't have to stop yeah. and get out of the system. It just happens in the background. A hundred percent, yes. So you would yeah. never even notice that the sync is running. It's just going to be continuously updating in the background with that new data as it comes in. Perfect. All right. So let's uh, get to the heart of this and show me how it all all the magic happens. <laughs> awesome. All the magic. <laughs> so first things first, I know I mentioned before, but a couple of prerequisites. Make sure, obviously, you have your business central with your BC yep. company set up, your D365 sales environment. And if you're working with trials, you'll already have those necessary user credentials. If you're working in your own environment, you might need to have a little bit of extra security access assigned. 
So typically we're gonna want that to be a global admin in Office 365 and to have that same user assigned uh, a super user in Business Central. So two important things just so that we have access to everything that I'm gonna be walking through here in the back end. Perfect. All right, so first thing that we wanna do, like I said, we're setting everything up from the Business Central side. So we're gonna go here to our little menu and oops. So many options. I've lied. I'm gonna go back one step. I'm gonna go up here to my settings drop down, and I'm gonna go straight to assisted setup here to begin setting up my connection. And once I'm in here, I'm gonna scroll down to connect with other systems. And it might look like we're skipping a few steps here. We're actually not gonna start by setting up an integration to Dynamics 365 Sales. And that's because of what you mentioned earlier, Peter. We actually need to set up our connection to Dataverse first, just so that we're connecting to those tables where our data is actually gonna be stored, where our data is gonna be coming from and going to. That makes sense. You so, think Microsoft put that above the other one. But you would think. It is what it is. Well, the nice thing about it is you can see, even if I went ahead and clicked to set up an integration to Dynamics 365 Sales, it's gonna kick me back. Uh -oh. So you can't really do it wrong. It's gonna tell me, sorry, you need to set up a connect. So uh, Microsoft's taking care of the customers. <laughs> They're making sure yeah. no one makes a mistake. I got it. Yeah, just making sure you get that nice little pop-up. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, okay, go back down to my Dataverse connection and start here. So right from the start, I have a couple of different options. I have an option to enable data synchronization, which is why we're here. So I'm gonna leave that toggled on. There's also a secondary option here for enabling virtual tables and events. And this is something that we might even wanna do a separate video about because I'm just gonna to toggle this off for now. But essentially the system that I described to you earlier, so we're sending data up to those Dataverse tables, updating that information and passing it into sales or vice versa. There is another option where virtual tables are gonna create sort of their own tables with inside Dataverse that are windows into our BC data that'll pass that through that way. There are some constraints on it right now though. So it's not, it doesn't have the, the same kind of like searchability, security access. They have some data modeling stuff. So for right now, I'm just gonna to toggle that off. Perfect. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and say next. And accept terms and conditions always. I mean, do we even want to read those types of conditions? <laughs> I mean, I can go back. You are welcome to read I, them. I don't want to, but someone watching this video might want they to. They might, those. yeah. If this, if that is of interest to you, you can go back and pause. <laughs> They'll be there. <laughs> okay, so from this point, I'm going to set up my data connection, and it's going to ask me, where am I connecting to? So if you have multiple different CRM environments, for instance, if you have multiple different sales environments, I don't, um, but you would be able to click this little three dot icon right here and it'll show you the list of all of your different environments that you could connect to. And this URL is really just the URL that you use to yes. access your CRM. It looks kind of ugly for us right now because it's a sample system. Yeah, exactly. So obviously yours is probably a little bit more <laughs> uh, cleaned Clean. up than ours is, but that should be the link to this, the CRM system that you want to link with Business Central. So right off the bat, it's probably not your production environment. You'll be wanting to test in the sandbox, most likely, or a, a test environment. So just making sure that that correct uh, link is posted in here. So next step, I'm gonna sign in with those administrator user credentials. Go ahead and choose my login. And again, I'll need either um, global admin for Office 365 and Business Central super user to be able to confirm this change. Okay, so administrator is signed in and go ahead and click next. Wait a second, you didn't put a credentials in there. Was it just using whatever you were logged into Business Central? Yes, through? yeah, so I'm logged into both environments right now. I've already gone through my authenticator, so it, it knows who I am. If I wanted to change the credentials, I could do that now. And while this is working, I have a question about the uh, login. What would happen if, um, well, dang it, I can't remember my question, so to get back to that oh no i know it was a, it was a really good question i know i'm sure it was it sounded it's starting off strong <laughs> well it's just about the security something about the security yeah. do they need super admin rights on the crm side too then i would assume or 
So on the CRM side, you need to be at least an administrator, and you also will need to be an administrator in Dataverse. So that's two roles that you need to have access to just to assign, just to set up the sync. We usually prefer it to be a global admin, just in case there's any kind of like kinks in the setup. So ideally, it would be global admin. You only need those rights for the time of setting up the sync. So the user, whoever they are, don't need to maintain those rights in perpetuity. I, that was that was actually my question. Yeah. Was like what would happen if like, so I, I log in, I'm the super user and I have all the credentials. I set this up and then let's say I go find another job. Would then everything stop working or it doesn't sound like it based on what you just said? Right. No, it would not. So it's just for the time of setup. Everything is going to be set up and running system wide. So it's not tied to a specific user that does the setup. If that user changes, if you go somewhere else, it doesn't really matter. It's just who has those access right now in the moment when we're setting up the integration. Perfect. So it's gonna so this, set up. Go it's ahead. gonna take a while? Um, it should, usually takes like a minute or two to set up. This one's a little bit longer than usual, but right, right now what it's doing is it's actually deploying a solution in our D365 sales environment. And it's in deploying a solution that's going to bring with it all of those different pieces and parts that are going to call our Business Central Dataverse connection. So it's so to, to explain it a different way for those who don't yeah. know, solution in Dynamics 365 sales side are just sets of functionality, tables, menus, fields, screens, things like that. Yes. Yeah. It's just a package to tell our CRM system what we want it to do and how we want it to connect to Business Central. Okay, so looks like the wait is over. <laughs> so what's this screen? Yeah, so now that our connection has been set up, the next decision that we need to make is to choose an ownership model. So basically what they're asking for here is who owns the record. So who's gonna own the records between our two systems? And you have two options here to choose from, person or team. Choosing the ownership model, it's really going to depend on your business processes. So it's about how you collaborate internally, if you have any security requirements or access requirements to records. Um, but we can take a look at both and maybe chat a little bit about why you might want to choose one or the other. Yeah. And does this apply to like in the dynamic CRM owner is a, it means something as far as security and what records display and what you have access to. So is it the same owner or is it just the owner of the table that BC sends the data into and to Dataverse as the staging ground? Yeah, that's a great question. So it is the owner of the record. So if you imagine that you have an account in D365 sales that you are the owner of, that's that same owner that we're looking for. So is Peter the owner of the account in CRM or do we have a sales team that owns the record inside D365 sales, if that makes sense? It does, but can you change this model based on the type of record? Because I could see where, let's say Peter Wolf owns these 15 customer records from accounts receivable, mm -hmm. but the quotes, invoices and orders, I wouldn't really own them as a salesperson. I would just right. see them. So you're choosing here for the base integration. So I'm saying either I'm going to have a team ownership model, which essentially means, so in Business Central, if you think about how Business Central operates itself, um, the company is the legal business formation. So all of our access, all of our ownership, all of our security permissions terms, all of that is at the company level. So Dataverse and Dynamics 365 sales Neither of them have, there's not really a one-to-one, -one, right, between a business central company and anything that exists natively in sales or dataverse. So the way that they try to think about mapping this over, the closest thing that there's kind of an amalgamation to is a business unit in dataverse or in sales. So if I were to choose that team model, what that's going to do is it's going to create basically a business unit, a default business unit and then assign all of the records. So all of our payment terms, accounts, customer information, invoices to that default team. So everything that gets passed into D365 sales is gonna be owned by a team rather than Peter Wolf salesperson. That kind of situation is ideal if you have obviously like 
shared access between those records. So if you have sales teams that all work on the same records, or if you have customer service team that all work on the same records, that's great. But obviously not maybe the best fit if you are looking for, like you mentioned before, Peter has a sales account that he works. These are his invoices. These are his opportunities in the system. We want to track his sales against that specific account. That would be a better fit for something like person. That makes sense. And I think if anybody has questions, they can uh, put comments below yeah. or ask us, hook up with, with us on LinkedIn. I'm curious with this setting and also with the synchronization timings that we talked about earlier, can you change these once you've set them up? We set up the Dataverse connection setup. So if I were working with team and maybe I wanted to switch to working with a yeah. person model, you can redeploy the connection setup. So I could cancel this. I could set it up again if it's already been set up. But it is best... I would say to kind of pick what you're going to go with early and stick to it just because it can cause obviously data inconsistencies later if we're talking about, you know, who owns a record on one side or the other. That makes sense. And I would imagine if you canceled it and redid it, is there, would records get reduplicated? Like would it resend over the accounts receivable customers or would it know that, hey, they're already in there, so leave them alone? Yeah, it would know that the records are already there because it's it's matching them on backend values. But you would need to go through and do a coupling basically to update that owner field. So because yeah. by default, if I had said team here and then later I want to go back and map to a person, I'm going to have to remap that specific owner field to pull that data across. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. It sounds like there's some complexities here that yeah. definitely if someone doesn't know exactly what they're doing they should pause a minute maybe reach out and just ask or dig into the help files a little bit more if they don't want to reach out to us yeah absolutely okay mm -hmm. the so one consideration if you're using person is that you will need to have a d365 sales user and a sales person in sales and then a sales person in business central to map that one-to-one -one across so and where do you do that mapping? Great question. So yeah. um, it's going to prompt us if we choose person. So if we choose person here, it's going to give us our list of current Dynamics 365 uh, users that we have set up because it's a trial environment. It's just going to be the one. It'll be my admin user. Um, and then you have to select a salesperson to map that person to in Business Central. That makes sense. So I have another dumb question possibly. Yeah. Out of our customer base, is it an even split between who does team and who does person or does it just really depend on the customer's needs? It really does depend on the customer's needs. I say, I think it tips towards person just because of that individual record ownership. There is a little bit of extra setup when you go with the person model, but you do have more data than on the sales side. If we're pushing all of our you know, accounting data into the sales side to kind of report on what are our sales metrics based on that invoice data and things like that. So that I'd say it leans towards person, but both are definitely makes, well represented. I mean, that makes sense to me. I mean, like as a salesperson, like it just makes sense that individuals, even though we may have a team approach to things, individuals own the account. There's usually a primary person on the account, so that makes sense. Yeah. I'm not surprised. Absolutely. Okay, cool. Anything else you want to share before we move on? I think that's just about it. Oh, I will say something that people will worry about too when it comes down to if I select person here, because you do need a user, right, on the sales side, and you do need a salesperson user on the business central side. You don't need a license necessarily for both uh, for both systems. Cool. So I, I could have a business central salesperson as long as that person doesn't need access to like log in and check those business central records, that, that data can still pass through into sales for that person. It's a Commonly asked question for sure. Yeah, so can I rephrase that? Yeah. Just so to make sure I'm clear. So if I'm hearing you right, Peter Wolf salesperson doesn't actually need to have a license for business central. Correct, yeah, he does not. Okay, all right, cool. So I'm going to select, actually, I'm going to go with team just because there's a little less configuration. When we walk through, so I'm going to select team. And then we have the option here to complete setup without synchronization. And we're just going to leave that here for now. I assume you can sync it later. Yeah, we're going to sync. So we're right now we're just setting up the Dataverse connection. Um, we're going to sync when we actually get to that Dynamics 365 connection as well. So no need to sync now. Perfect. Go ahead and say next. 
So th what this is doing right now is setting up a Dataverse table for the BC system to talk to, right? That's all it's doing right now. It's just making yeah. sure everything's set up properly, security credentials are cleared, and it's all configured properly. Yeah, exactly. And then when we want to finalize, we will somehow tell the CRM side of the house to talk to that table as well, and then we'll start pushing data over. We'll start the actual synchronization process. Yeah, exactly. Right now it's just doing that back end setup. We're gonna fill it with data in that next section. Perfect. Oh, there it is. All right. So you can check the synchronization recommendations. This is just gonna tell you the sort of base tables that the connection to Dataverse is setting up. Oh, so that's like just a readme file, basically? It's it's just giving you like a kind of, we're, we're going to synchronize well more than just these tables here, but this is sort of the base layer that um, is going to be set up for this first sync. So I it's see. got... Because, yeah, this is really basic. It doesn't yeah. have like orders and quotes and inventory. Yeah, this is just the Dataverse. Uh, so it's that first sort of initial synchronization for contact currency. We've got customer tables and payment terms. And these are just things that have to sync essentially first. So we're not going to sync our orders, right, without having our payment terms that have already synced into Dataverse um, because those order records are going to be dependent on a lot of information that we would find here in payment terms. That makes sense. It's basically the setup tables that yeah. the other data is going to require to be properly configured. Yes, and we don't have to make any changes here, and um, we don't have to set anything up. Um, we're just going to say OK and go ahead and click Finish to move on to the next step. Perfect. All right. So from here, the synchronization is going to run with or without me. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just select Back. So it's happening in the background right now? Yeah, it's going to happen in the background um, while we're setting up the rest of our connection. Do you get a notification when it's done, or you just have to go and check and just see if it's completed? You do not, yeah. So you can go in the back and check. Since we're still syncing, we're still going to be setting up this integration in D365 sales. We're going to see those same tables again when we go into our synchronization. So if we needed to do a resync, if you wanted to see if they've been successful, if we have any errors, that's going to show up in just a second for us. Sense. I mean, the world has too many interruptions anyway, Brent. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I need an alert when it's finished. It's usually, I mean, depending on your database size, so I don't want to say it's usually pretty quick, but definitely by the time you get to the end of setting up our integration with sales, hopefully those tables have synced in. And if not, you know, we'll walk through how to check that. All right, so now that we've set up our Dataverse connection, you can see we have this nice little checkbox here. So that's one notification for you. We've successfully set that up. If I click here again, it's going to run me through the whole process again. So I'm not going to do that. Yeah, no yeah. need to do that. <laughs> no, I'm not going to walk through that just, just now. But now I'm able to move on to that setting up integration with D365 sales. It's going to give me the URL. So this is the same URL from the Dataverse connection that I already set up. You can see it's auto filled in here for me because I've set up that connection with Dataverse. I couldn't change this if I wanted to. And that's just based on our connection that we just set up to Dataverse over in the previous section. Perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and say next. And I want to enable the connection. So I'm going to say finish. And it may have us log in here again. I don't think it will. So what exactly is this step doing? So the previous step was saying push, it was setting up the Dataverse tables for the Business Central to send data to. So what is this step doing? This step's actually connecting to your Dynamics 365 sales environment, not the Dataverse data layer of that environment, if that makes sense sense to you yeah. okay so will you have to pick a specific app that it's connecting to because in the dynamic sales side there's apps that you run so you don't it's going to connect to the environment as a whole so if you have multiple okay. different apps that you're working on so you have like a customer service app a sales app the same data is going to be available so you may choose to show it hide it how you want to display it is still totally up to you but it'll be available across all of the different apps on that single environment. Makes sense. It's working on it. It's working on it. Working on it. <laughs> I mean, we could look at what it looks like. Let me see. If I look over in my solutions, 
on my actual sales trial now, I should be able to see, if I go to all solutions, my business central. Does it look like it shows here yet? Yeah, it should be here. So that's apparently, that's what it's doing. Is to refresh that screen or that's what you're doing right now? Yeah, Let's see if it shows up here. Get all our solutions. I think it's this one right here. Right. So um, this is the solution that's currently being loaded into our actual Dynamics 365 sales environment is the Business Central Dataverse base integration. And then there's How did you one. See that? I don't, it's like cutting it off here. So if you're oh. hovering over there, you get a tool tip. I am. Yeah. So if I, I don't think I can drag this display name out anymore because these columns are. It's that one. It's tells you, yeah, I'm not seeing the tool tip um, with the screen share, but it's the business central one. You open it up so we can take a look inside it. So this is what's actually being installed. I see. Our Dynamics 365 business central dataverse connection. So that's what, when it says working on it, that's what it's that's working what it's on doing. back over there. Yes, yeah, loading those tables. And does this process usually take, what, 10 minutes, five minutes, 15 minutes? I'd say anywhere from maybe 30 minutes to an hour, depending, just to, to the whole process. So to actually set up your first sync, it's not going to be necessarily completed, but to do your sort of setup is probably about 30 minutes to an hour. And then the sync is going to depend on how much data you have that you're migrating between the two systems. And that makes sense if you have a huge customer database or vendor database is going to take a lot longer than if you have a small database. While we're waiting for this, a lot of companies will have multiple different divisions or P&Ls inside of their business central, there'll be you know, different company databases. Can you sync all of those with the CRM? Yes. So it'll be a little bit different than the process that we're walking through here, just because there's some uh, additional um, customization, some additional uh, setup that you have to do, but you absolutely can. So if I had a, for instance, a business central company for North America, and maybe I have another company for Europe, one for Asia, but I want all of those business central companies to sync into my sales environment, you can set up something called a multi-company synchronization. It's just a little bit of extra planning, obviously, that you'd have to do or like that, what that data structure is going to look like and how we're going to view it in sales and a little bit of extra configuration around Dataverse setup, basically. But yes, yeah, it's absolutely possible. Okay, so now you can see we have our Dynamics 365 sales integration setup pop up. So it's going to show you a couple of different things right off the bat. The first thing is our link to sales. So again, that's our link to our Dynamics 365 uh, or 365 sales environment. It's also going to show us the active number of scheduled synchronization jobs. So those tables that we saw before, our contact table, our company table, payment terms. Right now we have eight out of 16 possible jobs that are scheduled. That number is going to go up here in just a second. Right below, it's going to tell us, is our integration enabled or not? So flip to yes is a good sign since we are enabling an, an, an integration right now. Uh, and it's also going to give us some information just on the version, which is 100. It will display right down below here the link to our Business Central web client URL. And then we have some optional settings that we can toggle uh, for the Dynamics 365 sales. A couple of the most important things, just to give you kind of an overview of what's in here. There's nothing that we're going to change right off the bat, but it'll tell you it's checked to make sure that your version of Dynamics 365 sales is compatible with the BC integration. That's good. You want to see yes here. The next, How, yeah, go ahead, Peter. Would that ever be no? Because <laughs> like everything's in the cloud now, so Microsoft's keeping things in lockstep, I would imagine. Yes. So that, that would never be a no. So I'm thinking that they might do away with this column here. So what this used to be until recently was it would actually show your version of Dynamics 365 oh. sales. So if I wanted to verify that it's showing the correct version here, I could go into my sales environment, pull up my about, see what version, and check the two between. So instead of having that step, they tried to make it a little easier just by saying like, yes, we've checked your version, but I think, you know, maybe because people are used to seeing that version information here, it's just, it's here for right now. Got it. 
Yeah. So you shouldn't, you should, if you see no here, I mean, once in a blue moon, maybe, but no, I should never say no because it's, you it's see no, cloud. It's time yeah. to, uh, to really call in the yeah. firefighters. Phone a friend if you yeah, see, friend. If you yeah. see no there. So the next option here, it's going to show us if our business central integration solution has imported. So it says yes. That's the same solution that we looked at over here. We know it imported because I can look in my backend and see that that solution is there, but it's gonna do just a nice little confirmation for you if you don't wanna go do that extra step to see if the solution is there. And then we have a couple of different options around sales orders and how we get our sales order data between the two systems. So orders from Business Central and orders from sales. I think that's something that we might want to do maybe a, a longer video about in the future, just because there there are a lot of options to choose from. How many more basic setup steps are there? Because I think maybe we try to keep this at like 30 minutes. And if we have to do another yeah. video, we do a separate video for the audience. Yes. Yeah, so low attention spans. For, I know. For me. <laughs> yeah. Same. Well, I have a high attention span, I guess, for sales order <laughs> toggle keys, but uh, most people are probably not in the same camp. So totally understandable. There is a lot to sales order specifically. So in terms of everything else, all the other tables that we want to talk about syncing, like our customer table, our, our invoices, all that kind of stuff. Very simple. That's all kind of a, a one off. We're just going to run at one time sync for that. Um, but sales orders can be a little finicky because you're going to have to decide do we want sales orders to be bi-directional? Do we want sales orders to only be created in the accounting system and sent back um, to the sales integration? So there's a lot of decisions really that you have to decide for sales orders specifically that you don't have to worry about so much with the other tables. That makes sense. And I think I will want to drill down because yeah. in a different video, because you know, as you know, most of our customers are manufacturers and distributors. And so sales orders and inventory and line item details, all those things are really important. So it'd probably be a good idea to like kind of run through the different scenarios and what they mean. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's a great idea. There's a lot to go through. Right now, I'm just going to leave these settings as is, and we can kind of recap on that a, a little bit later. Perfect. And there are some, just a couple extra options down here in the advanced settings that I wanna make sure that we go through. I don't know if you see the pop-ups when I when I hover on these here as well, but- I do see the tool tips, yeah. You do, okay. That's yeah. interesting that you do in Business Central. So the first option here is to open coupled entities in the Dynamics 365 Sales Hub. This is a really cool option. So what that enables you to do is if I am working in my actual Dynamics app, so for instance, I would have the option if that is toggled on to in my details, I could have a little pop up that's going to allow me to go directly to the record in Business Central. So if I wanted to see the A datum record inside Business Central and not just preview the information that's being sent over, if I toggle this option on, that's going to allow me to actually move really quickly between those two systems. Um, so I could see even more information. That's just what what's being presented uh, on the sales page. Is there a similar option in Business Central? So if I'm looking at a datum in, in the AR customer to pop up, up the CRM record? There is. So we can look at that when we do our actual walkthrough. But there is a Perfect. link to open the record in Dynamics 365 sales that'll be um, added to Business Central when the connection is finished. So the next option that we have here is to automatically synchronize item availability. Uh, this is a great one too. I'm going to toggle that on right now. And what that's going to enable us to do is to, when we're actually building our quotes, our orders on the Dynamics 365 sales side, it's going to give me this nice little column uh, for my products to show me how many I still have available. So I'm not building a quote or an order for my customer for a hundred of a specific unit. If we only have 40 that is currently available. I want to be able to see that information really clearly, really obviously when I'm building that, out that quote and order. And it's going to automatically run that sync again every 30 minutes. So it's not 100% real time, but it's really close to update what those totals are that we have available for the, those products in our accounting system. Makes sense. That's an important one, I think, yeah. like you said. I mean, most of our customers ask us, you know, I want to know what I have on hand to sell to my customers. So yes. yeah. You need to know the inventory levels. Yeah, exactly. Highly recommend toggle that guy on. Unit group mapping, we don't need to worry about. It's just, we, do we have unit groups in the system set up? 
yes, no. It's going to sync those back and forth between the system. You can see it's automatically selected for us. I couldn't unselect it if I wanted to, but just so we know what that is. Perfect. All right, so our next steps here are going to be, first, we could test the connection so we can see that it's enabled, um, but I'm just going to do like a quick test to make sure that the connection is working. Great news. It's successful. All of our settings are set up yes. correctly. Yay, we did it. Um, relatively low bar for success, but we did. <laughs> so we've tested our connection. Assisted setup is going to take us right back to our main page where we've been the entire time. No, don't be, don't Not going to go there. Um, but our next step is actually going to be uh, to run the synchronization. So that synchronization is going to pull all of our data that's in our two systems, send it back and forth between the two, depending on our selections. Uh, You're going to skip right over mapping. I am for Come right now. I was thinking Fine. about it. So I'm going to skip over mapping. Well, I, for I trust your judgment. We can, we can cover <laughs> some things on a second pass here. Let's take a quick look at mapping because there is one thing that okay. I, I did want to say. If I had selected, you remember in this setup, I selected team, right? So yes. all of my records are going to be owned by just a specific like sales team or um, customer service team that works yes. those together. However, if I had set up person, before I do anything else, the most important thing that I have to do is to come in here to mapping and couple my salespeople. And that's that this connection. Is where you match the BC username with the sales, the CRM username. Yes. Yeah. If I were to run the synchronization without coupling salespeople, I'm going to get a lot of errors um, because it's going to be looking for an owner and it's going to be trying to match on an owner for things like our customers, for our contacts. Um, and then it's going to be running those same syncs for things like our orders, our invoices. And if it's not finding a business central user, and if it's not finding a Dynamics 365 sales user, it's going to air out on a lot of those records and you're going to have to do the process again. So very important That's, if you're using person to couple your salespeople before you do anything else. That makes a lot of sense because otherwise the silly little computer won't be able to figure out what to do. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so Who said AI is going to take our jobs? Oh, gosh. That sounds nice. <laughs> but... no, <it> doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> no, not for integration table mappings. I would not trust ChatGPT within 100 miles of setting up or a business central integration personally, on. but they're working on it. So when we actually look at, let's take a quick look at the integration table mapping since we're here. See, I, I brought it up and I pulled you <laughs> down. Now we're going into the weeds. It's all right. Let's go through the weeds and then it'll all seem really simple after this. All right. So I'm going to expand I do have to say here. too. You do make it seem simple, but you've done this many, many times. So ah. people that are watching that have never done this before, I think they just need to be patient. And if they have questions, just reach out. We can assist. Yeah, absolutely. So my general rule is that if you are trying to do something for 15 minutes and you have not made any progress within that 15 minutes, it's time to like put in a pin and phone a friend. <laughs> so phone a friend. Yeah, yeah, reach out, ask a question, because usually if you can't figure it out in that first 15 minutes, it's going to be a lot more wasted time that just gets more frustrating mm -hmm. as you go on. But hopefully this is helpful, at least for like the quick overview of what yeah. this what this looks like. Okay, so the next piece I'm going to look at is our synchronization. So that's actually the process that's going to pull in our Dynamics 365 sales data or push our Business Central data into the sales app. So right when I click synchronization, you can see I have a couple of options that'll pop down here. Where I wanna go first is to run a full synchronization. So you only wanna do this one time. It's gonna give you a nice little pop-up when we select it. This is just for that initial sync to kind of get the data moving between the two systems. We also later on, if we made any changes to records, we can walk through how to sync anything that's been modified. And then this is how we would actually check those jobs. So Peter, before when you asked, you know, do we get a notification? How do we know if something is synced or not? This is the area where you would want to go to check for that, the uh, job queue entries that are currently running. And the synchronized modified records, is that just a way of manually firing off a job that's scheduled? So like if I wanted just to force it to sync up right now? Yes, it is. Yeah. So if I said maybe that 30 minutes is not good enough, I need to know I have that order data that I absolutely need for a customer on the line right now. I could come in here synchronizing modified records. I could also open up that specific account and just sync the records that are in there and they'll pull through instantly. And to be clear, when we say 
I could just come in here and do this. Yeah. It wouldn't be the salesperson. It'd be no. someone who administers the system. Yes, exactly. It'd be, okay. again, your admin user or yeah. um, a BC admin, somebody that you have that typically works in Business Central. That makes sense. All right. So for now, I'm just going to go ahead and select run full synchronization for my first time, one time sync. And I'm crossing my fingers that there's not a lot of data in the sample system. There's not a ton of data. There is an, enough data, I'll say. There's not a ton, but there's a, a decent amount that you can at least test. So it looks like these are those tables that we um, had synced earlier with Dataverse, where we said mm -hmm. Dataverse is going to sync them whether we ask them to or not. So we've got our contact, currency, customer, a couple others. Um, we do have some errors that are showing up right now. We don't need to necessarily be super concerned about those at the moment because um, we're going to sync all of this again. Um, but it's going to show you. So we have a lot more items here to sync that we have not selected yet. And oh, go ahead. I might, be look, I might be looking ahead, but I don't see quotes on here and orders. Is that because we haven't set those up yet to even be in this list? Yes. Yeah, so there should actually be a sales order table listed. Well, maybe it's posted sales order just cutting off. Yeah, I, it's there's invoices there, but I don't see sales order, which is interesting. Um, but let's try to do just a quick sync through sure. and see um, what that looks like. So you can see if you've got recommendations on the far right side here. So we've got full synchronization is recommended for things like currency. There's really limited amount of data in currency. It's really pulling over. Do you use one? Do you use multiple? And then for these that don't have options selected, it wants us to select our own coupling criteria. So I'm going to go ahead and select to open what it's looking at. And on the right hand or on the left hand side, we can see what are these fields called or what are these columns called in Business Central? We've got address, we've got address two, zip code, city, all down the line. Integration field name, when it's talking about the integration, it's talking about D365 sales. So if you're on the sales side a lot, these names should look familiar. We've got like address one, street one, street two. So it's just giving us like what are the front end column values for our fields. What we want to do here is we're actually going to manually select since it didn't do it for us. We're going to go ahead and select that we want to match on these fields. And if it was something like, for instance, we're not collecting middle name and I don't need to sync that, I can leave it unchecked. But and basically the point is just to minimize whatever you're syncing, because if you're not using a field, why sync it? And yeah, it'll just make everything run faster. And exactly. Yeah, exactly. It's also like a nice check. So I can say, oh, home page in Business Central is website in Dynamics 365 sales. I'm going to um, go so on a limb and say you probably don't need to sync the pager. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, is there a pager option? Yeah, there is a pager. That's awful. OK, well, I'm going to uncheck pager for now because it's 2024. But up at the, the top, these are calling us. Yeah, they're calling. They're calling BC. I think they're, the call's coming from inside the house. So one other option here that you have is to resolve update conflicts. So if, for instance, there is different information in these fields, we're picking basically which system to believe. So are we being updated if I have a different email address between these two systems? There has to be a source of truth that is going to win. Don't be hurtful and tell me that it's Business Central and the salespeople can trust it. It is 99.9. I can't even think of an example where it would be the salespeople, unfortunately. Poor salespeople everywhere are crying yeah, right now. Yeah, I'm so sorry, but the accounting section is cheering way in the back. So we are going to send an update to the integration table if any of this data doesn't map, because 100% of the time, accounting's address is probably more accurate than sales. Many apologies. Sure. We're going to send update to the integration table there. We also can select this box to synchronize after coupling. So I'm going to check that because we're synchronizing. That's why we're in here in the system. And we also have an option here to toggle on what happens if it's not finding any of this information. If it's not finding a record to couple, I want to create, I'll toggle over that so you can see. Um, I'm going to, if I can't find the record, I'm going to create a new record if I'm not able to find a match for it. So is this going to create a record in sales or is it going to create a record in BC? 
BC. Or either. Yeah, or either, really either. But for this first sync, do we have sales data? We have sales data in both systems. It'll create one in each. So it'll create a record. If there's not a record already in sales that is a match for a record in Business Central, it'll create a record there. If there's not a match for a sales record in BC, it's going to create a record on that side, Got depending it. on if you have a bi-directional sync set up or not. And it, I mean, we're kind of jumping ahead, but so I would assume like in CRM, I would put my prospects in and then I would trigger them and say this is now a customer and that would probably send it over to bc if yes. it meets that criteria and we'll exactly talk about that at a later date yeah we can talk about that when we dig a little bit deeper into the mapping but you can say not all accounts necessarily we want to have in business central so like right. our prospects are like cold leads whatever we probably don't want those clogging up our accounting data you can select what type of customer what kind of relationship does this person have to have in order for them to sink into uh, business central makes sense all right all right so i've made my changes i'm going to go ahead and say okay and then I'm going to do the same here with just our item product. These are very important tables because they they form that kind of base layer for everything else that comes in. I'm going to do the same thing. We're going to send an update to an integration table because we always believe Business Central. And I'll do the same here with Opportunity. And most of the time you can see when we open this up, most of these are uh, self-selected for us. Really the reason that it's asking us to manually create this tables is mainly for this field right here. What do I do if I want to resolve an update uh, conflict? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to synchronize that and resource product. Same thing. To the integration table. Oh, goodness, I've made it upset. OK, I'll go ahead and say OK. And that's really it. So we've got all of our recommended settings created. Um, the next thing that I want to do is when I select sync all, it's going to sync every single table in this list and start that synchronization process to pull and push that data um, into the two systems based on the direction that's specified here. So if there's if you want to do a drum roll, I don't know, but <laughs> I'll go ahead and select sync all. It's gonna give me this nice little pop-up warning. It's gonna tell me that it's gonna synchronize all of my records, make sure that we're doing this only when we're synchronizing data for the first time. It's gonna run in the background. So again, if you have users that are in sales, if you have users that are working in Business Central, if you have other admin tasks to do, it's just gonna continue going in the background. I, I don't need to leave this window up or open. So I'm gonna say yes to continue. And our sync is running. So that's really it. What does this it. normally take? And is this, yeah, I was going to say, is this a good time Trick to question. stop? And then we can pick back up uh, in the next session and talk more about um, the final bits of configuration and then maybe start talking about how the users would actually see the data. Yes, yeah. So we want this sync to run. It'll depend on your database size again. So everybody's going to be different. Our database size is pretty small because we're working with just trial environments. So that should run pretty quickly. If I did want to check, so I could go ahead and back up one step here and check oh, my right. job There's queue. That... Yeah, I remember you showing us this. Yeah, I can just see. So I've got some on hold right now while that sync runs. So we've got some that are ready. This is probably going to take a bit just because we're doing the first sync. But for instance, yeah, I can see that contact is running and all those other tables. It's currently on hold. What does hold. on hold mean? Does it just mean it's waiting for the other ones to finish before it does that one? Yeah, so it's it's just on hold. They only run um, a job at a time, basically. So yeah. they're not going to be synchronizing every table all at the same time, especially when it comes to that initial sync, because there are some of those tables that have to sync first because others are dependent on them. So Yeah, that makes mm -hmm. sense. Well, I have to say this was really educational. I really appreciate you showing this. And I hope anybody that wants to can subscribe to our channel and catch the next round of this. We're going to go into a little bit more detail on the mapping tables. And then we'll also be talking about how to actually use the software and how it will look for salespeople inside of CRM. I mean, honestly, that's all I care about. Yeah. <laughs> what it looks like for the sellers. You might also share what it looks like for the business central accounting people. Yeah, well, it is the fun part. So <laughs> I think that video is probably going to have a lot more interaction <laughs> than the maybe boring setup piece. But I hope this was 
But let's it's face not it, the entertaining piece, informational. <laughs> yeah, the boring setup piece has to be done yeah. before the fun stuff happens. So it totally makes sense. Thank you very much, Bryn. Really appreciate it. We'll talk to you very, real soon. Sounds good. Thanks, Peter. Bye. Bye.